Hello you absolute legends. Last month I released two videos outlining charity fraud committed by the completionist and his charity the Open Hand Foundation. Those two videos can basically be summed up with three main allegations. One, the completionist committed charity fraud by making false, misleading statements about what the charity was doing in order to solicit donations. Two, the completionist stole donations that were supposed to go to the Open Hand Foundation. And three, the revenue generated by the golf tournament run by Gerard's family was not being sent to the Open Hand Foundation. These are extremely serious allegations. And to be clear, when I made those allegations, I was being extremely serious. I wouldn't say these types of things without having a very good reason to do so. And now, finally after almost an entire month, the completionist has responded. And his response is terrible. It's one of the worst videos I've ever seen. He is manipulative, he lies, he blames everyone else, he provides no relevant evidence, he misdirects, he constructs multiple straw man arguments, and best of all, he threatens legal action against me. Gerard seems to think that just saying you didn't do something means you didn't do it, regardless of whether or not you actually did. And if you say it with enough emotion, it must be true. Initially, this seemed to work, with all of his friends and sycophants exclaiming confidently on Twitter that he had done nothing wrong. And it was actually Mutahar and I that were the villains. Because you see, we aren't experts, and we don't know what we are talking about. I have to admit, when I made my previous videos, I kind of glossed over some of the evidence. I basically assumed that the fraud was so obvious I didn't need to explain. But evidently, this isn't the case. So in this video, I'm going to respond to Gerard and make it clear that he did in fact commit charity fraud. He did in fact embezzle donations and the golf money is in fact still missing. And if he feels confident enough or perhaps stupid enough to test my claims in court, I will happily oblige him. In this video, I'm going to break it all down and I really hope you enjoy. Now a big thanks to this video's sponsor, Empires and Puzzles. Empires and Puzzles is a free-to-play RPG where you match shields of the same color during combat to launch attacks. The more shields you match, the stronger the attacks, so using your brain actually helps. And as I always say, my viewers are the most attractive and intelligent people on Earth, so I know you'll do well. There are over 450 collectible heroes based around different elements, and they all have their own special abilities which you'll need to use strategically. And back at base, you'll need to build production vehicles to gather resources, craft useful battle items, train troops, and summon more heroes. There are some awesome events happening right now. Spread some cheer with the holiday event featuring special hero surprises, exclusive rewards, and joyous challenges. During December, brace yourselves for the epic Owl Tower event featuring some very unique heroes showcasing new damage and defense types. And of course, as we bid farewell to 2023, the new year will bring in some huge updates and surprises as well. Empires and Puzzles really is a fun game and is available on iOS and Android, so use the QR code on screen or click my link in the description to download and play today. First of all, I do need to mention that on the 29th of November, the Open Hand Foundation donated $600,000 to the AFTD. This is a really good thing. And it's great the money everyone else had entrusted to Gerard over the years is finally going to good use. This is a good start. And I hope the rest of the money that the Open Hand Foundation should have received gets donated as well. The opening five minutes of Gerard's video isn't the worst thing in the world. He distances himself completely from the golf tournament, which is probably wise, and he seems to apologize for providing misleading statements. Except he doesn't. He apologizes if you felt that you were misled, and he apologizes for making statements that were potentially misleading. Let's listen to what he has to say. I'm disappointed that I was not more straightforward regarding the Foundation's timeline for making donations, and that I made statements potentially implying donations were made when they had not yet been. It took too long for clear action to occur, and I apologize for all of this. But such inaction was not done for any selfish or malicious reasons. Most importantly, I want to apologize to anyone who ever donated over the years who felt they were wronged or led astray by any of this. Gerard is trying to address my first claim, that he made misleading statements and thus committed charity fraud. Gerard does not take much responsibility or own up to this in any significant way. Instead, he says he made claims that were potentially implying that donations were made, and that he was disappointed because he wasn't straightforward enough about the timeline. But let's look at what Gerard actually said. 
my father, my brother, and I started a foundation called the Open Hand Foundation that raises money for dementia research and treatment for organizations all over the world. Uh, we're soon going to be partnering up with the Alzheimer's Association, uh, currently working with the University of San Francisco, and we're kind of one of their main, um, their main funding uh, support partners uh, going into all of this. Um, he said in 2020 that he was currently one of the main funding support partners of the University of San Francisco. This lie is so batshit insane, it's impressive. And keep in mind, the Open Hand Foundation has never given a single dollar to the University of San Francisco. This lie implies many things. It doesn't just mean they give money to the USF, it means they give so much money that it's one of their main funding support partners. It means that Gerard has to know exactly how much money the Open Hand Foundation is giving. He has to know how much money other entities are giving, and then he has to compare the two to conclude that his contributions are large enough to substantiate the use of the word main. This lie cannot happen by accident. And the funny thing about this lie is that right before it, he says they will soon be working with the Alzheimer's Association. This is funny because in this clip from 2020, he name drops two organizations that still to this day have not received a single penny. And of course, we know that Gerard was also saying he worked with organizations big and small across the entire world. We just, every year, we try to raise as much money as possible, and then we go work with, you know, Alzheimer's Association of America, University of San Francisco, um, Association for FTD, which is what my mom had, FTD. So we've, like, worked with big and small organizations across the board. We're raising money for dementia research and honor my late mom, trying to help folks who've been impacted by dementia, working with organizations like USF, uh, uh, F FTD Association of America, uh, Alzheimer's Association of America and so many more. And, uh, you know, my dad has been working hard over these, these last, you know, I'd say last decade or so, working with so many organizations to raise money for dementia research prevention, um, helping families and people who've been affected by dementia. No reasonable person can take this any other way than by thinking that the Open Hand Foundation was giving these organizations money. Because the simple fact is that the Open Hand Foundation doesn't do anything else. They are simply a middleman, taking money from the fans of the completionist and moving it to a more worthwhile entity. It's literally their only job, and Gerard was always using past and current tense, not future tense. This isn't not being straightforward about the timeline, it's lying about the timeline. And not only did Gerard lie about giving money or being associated with charities, he lied about what the charity was doing. Listen to this. We are raising money for dementia research and treatment, more specifically helping families and those loved ones who've been affected by uh, early onset dementia and who are learning how their lives are gonna be changing forever, what tools and what necessities they're going to need as they go forward with taking care of their loved ones. These are very, very specific claims, and they are complete fabrications. He is lying out of his ass, and he did this constantly. Essentially, uh, we're raising money for dementia research and prevention, uh, specifically for people, um, for families rather, who just found out that a loved one of theirs has been um, affected by dementia uh, in terms of getting the correct care, the right doctor, so on and so forth. Uh, raising money for dementia research. We're trying to help those who are affected by Alzheimer's, all types, of, all types of dementia, and beyond. Specifically people who, families who have just found out that a loved one has dementia, and the next steps that are taken to help them transition from uh, the shock of it all to the next steps of, of getting uh, in-house care and so much more. Gerard lied about giving money, Gerard lied about working with organizations, and Gerard lied about how the charity was helping victims of dementia. And he was using those lies to solicit donations. This is the textbook definition of charity fraud. Britannica states that charity fraud is a type of fraud that occurs when charitable organizations that solicit funds from the public for philanthropic goals, such as seeking cures for diseases, solicit donations in a deceptive manner, or use the monies that they collect for purposes not intended by the donors. I have definitively shown that Gerard was deceptive and thus have already proven he committed charity fraud. But what about using money in a way not intended by the donors? Let's investigate that claim. Now, I never used the word embezzled in any of my videos, but Gerard kept bringing it up and he was adamant that he had not embezzled any money. Saying that we are fraudsters, that what we are doing is illegal and constitutes charity fraud, that we are using my dead mother's name to potentially embezzle money and steal is categorically false. 
For those who don't know what embezzlement means, it's simple. It means theft or misappropriation of funds placed in one's trust. With the power of math, I concluded that money from bits, subs and merch raised by IndieLand wasn't going to the Open Hand Foundation. And not only that, this means all the bits, subs, and all of that extra revenue that Gerard promised us would go to open hand wasn't sent over either. This is a pretty specific claim. I mean, how on earth would I know that if I was using bad math and missing information as Gerard asserts? And these accusations are the result of bad math and missing information. And yet, I was correct. And Gerard admitted this in his response. Income from Twitch subscriptions and bits, along with merchandise, have offset some of the production costs. So to say the money is missing is simply wrong. This was shocking to me. Does Gerard not understand that he is admitting to embezzlement here? To be clear, a charity using donations to cover expenses isn't illegal. It's totally normal and common. But that's not what Gerard did. Gerard lied to the public and said that this money was going to charity and that he wasn't touching any of it. Uh, you can do bits, you can do subs, you can actually donate money. Um, if you are more like, I want a material thing, you can do a shirt, you can do a coin, it all goes to charity, it's all great. Bits, subs, YouTube memberships, or YouTube super chats, anything that supports us is going to the foundation at the very end. As a reminder, all bits and subs, including Amazon Primes, uh, go towards the, uh, the charity as well. So it's all... All a pass through, all going for a good cause. Gift subs, memberships on YouTube, super chats, all that goes to the charity as well. And hey, if you want to get a t-shirt, all of the proceeds from the shirt also go to charity. Your primes, your gift subs, your bits, donations, all go to charity. We don't take any of it. Uh, bits and subs on Twitch, memberships, super chats on YouTube, all goes to the cause. If you want to buy an Indie Land t-shirt, you can totally do that. Uh, and for the folks who are in atten attendance, you can actually go buy one from the lobby, so please go do that. All the proceeds and all those things do go to charity. We don't touch any of it. And hey, all bits, all subscriptions, and all donations go directly to charity. We're taking none of it. It's all for a good cause. Gift subs, memberships on YouTube, super chats, all that goes to the charity as well. And Everything on stream today, whether you're donating bits or subs or donations towards any goals via the Tiltify account, if you buy a t-shirt, anything like that, all the money goes towards uh, Dementia Research. Um, we take, we make none of it, it all goes for the good cause. All bits, all donations, all super chats, all YouTube memberships, basically anything that's tied to donating or subscribing in a financial way to us is going to charity. We're not touching any of it. It's all going for a good cause. As a reminder, guys, all bits, subs, uh, donations, uh, Amazon Prime or Prime Gaming subs, and t-shirt sales all go to charity. So uh -oh. we, we, we touch none of it. It all goes for a good cause. We're, all the donations and bits, subscriptions that are happening on stream today all go towards the charity. If you buy a t-shirt, if you buy our challenge coin, that also all goes to charity. All subs during this stream for the next three or four days go towards the foundation. Uh, all the money goes to the Open Hand Foundation, an organization that we started in honor of my mom. And all that money goes to Dementia Research. We don't touch any of it. We just work with the people who do need the money. If you want to buy a t-shirt, you should buy a t-shirt. All the proceeds go there. Bits, subs, gift subs, super chats, memberships, anything financially involved with the show goes to Dementia Research. And all the money that we are raising, whether you are giving us bits, whether you're giving us subs, whether you're buying t-shirts or pins or whatever the hell we're selling, Anything and everything in between, all proceeds are going to charity. Uh, gift subs to other people, you can buy subs for yourself, you can give bits, all of that goes to charity. You can buy a t-shirt, we have a challenge coin that can legally be considered a weapon. If you throw it, it's very heavy. All of this stuff is going to charity. Income from Twitch subscriptions and bits, along with merchandise, have offset some of the production costs. And not only did Gerard say this many times, it was plastered on screen during the entire event for multiple years. What you need to understand is that Gerard isn't a charity. He is an individual. When you give a bit or a sub to his Twitch channel, you aren't giving money to charity. You're giving money to Gerard. Gerard said, give me money in the form of bits and subs and I will give that money to charity. He told his fans and people that look up to him, entrust your hard-earned money to me and I will give all of that money to the Open Hand Foundation. But you know what happened when everyone gave Gerard their money, assuming it would go to charity? 
Gerard said, fuck you, I've changed my mind. I'm going to spend that money on something else. I'm going to spend that money on something that directly benefits myself. This is again textbook charity fraud and is the literal definition of embezzlement. Some might say, but Carl, Gerard isn't spending money on himself. He's spending money to fund IndieLand. But IndieLand is Gerard. It's his event run by his company streamed on his Twitch channel. Of everyone in the entire world who benefits from IndieLand, it's Gerard who benefits the most. He gets the Twitch followers, he gets the media attention, he gets to mingle with game developers and celebrities, he gets all the credit. And do you really think that everyone who subscribes during IndieLand instantly cancels their subscription the moment it ends? Gerard taking donations to pay for IndieLand is not only him spending donations on himself, it's him paying for something that he directly benefits from. But besides, what he spends that money on is ultimately irrelevant. He said he would give that money to charity, but instead, he spent it. That's fraud, that's theft, and that is embezzlement. And what makes this even worse is that he would then go and lie trying to take credit for paying for everything himself. So for those of you guys who don't know, we had a show last year, um, and it, it, it went great, but it was very expensive, and we, TOBG covered the cost of it, but we, we have kind of a rule of like, we want to make sure that like, as we do charity events, that we're not costing the charity organization or really anyone outside of our, our, our awesome sponsors. But the guys at FlyQuest who've been so supportive, um, we want to make sure that the money that we do raise actually goes to charity and, and is spent properly. Gerard tries to explain why he kept the money for so many years, saying that he wanted to make a restricted donation, and he needed enough money to do that. This is one of the big reasons as to why the donation took so long. The organization did not raise enough money to make the impact that would allow the funds to be restricted and avoid those high admin costs. First, I need to point out what seems to be obvious to me, but hardly anyone else seems to acknowledge. Not passing along money people have entrusted to you to give to charity because you don't have enough money and you really want to make a restricted donation is completely bullshit. That is not a sufficient reason to hold funds. This is a completely unnecessary hurdle to place. If you as an entity already have a lot of money and you want your donation to be restricted, so be it. But if you keep other people's money and mislead people because of your grandiose vision of how you think you should impact the world, you're just a pile of garbage. At minimum, you should have asked the public first if this was okay. And the fact that you didn't shows a total disrespect for the property of others. But let's be honest, this excuse is just another lie. Remember, I emailed the Open Hand Foundation over a month ago, asking them why they haven't donated the money. Did Gerard forget that? He certainly hopes you did. Let me refresh your memory. In the official open hand response from Jacques, the vice president of the Open Hand Foundation, he said they hadn't donated because they didn't know who to donate to. They said they were still looking for a beneficiary and even asked me if I had suggestions. We even asked Gerard why he hadn't donated the money. And he said that he only found out recently and that it was not fucking cool that no money had been donated. I was made aware in 2021 where the, the, the money hadn't moved yet. And that's what made me go, that's not fucking cool. And that's what I got personally involved to move it. So we asked multiple people from the Open Hand Foundation and none of them mentioned anything about waiting for a restricted donation. Now, a month later, their story has completely changed. Apparently, this was the plan all along. And you know what's really interesting? They only donated 600,000. They had more than that amount of money over a year ago in 2022. We're almost in 2024. Isn't it convenient that 600,000 is suddenly enough to be a restricted donation, when over a year ago, it wasn't? This hurdle seemed to magically vanish as soon as someone discovered they hadn't donated any money. In fact, I can prove this hurdle never even existed. You can go to the AFTD website right now and choose exactly where your donation goes. You don't need to donate 600,000 and you don't even need to steal donations for 10 years to do it. And the icing on the cake is that when me and Mutaha spoke with Gerard, he outright admitted the only reason they were looking to donate the money now is because he was faced with the prospect of this going public. Yeah, that makes okay. sense. So as of now, the money, as far as your understanding, that six hundred sixty thousand dollars, roughly, is still sitting in your like that that charity account, waiting for a benefactor at the right time. Uh, I mean, as of this week, we've been we've been having conversations about moving it as early as as today or tomorrow, just because the pressure I got from you guys. If I'm being quite honest, um, mm -hmm. not that I was trying to save face, but like this is a 
a private fight that I've been dealing with for months with my family. And I, I even told my family, hey, this is the last Indian land I'm ever going to do because this is the 10th year anniversary of my mom's passing. And uh, when I kind of found all this information out, I was very unhappy with what things were going. And um, he knew this was deceptive and wrong the entire time. I'm not trying to ask for forgiveness. I'm not trying to hide this. But what what would you guys like me to do? Because I I want to do right by everyone involved on my side. And I, I want to absolve myself of this as best I can. And I know I can't. And, you know, you guys are some of the biggest creators in the space. When you guys will, whatever you guys will say, this is going to follow me for the ex the rest of my life. And I just want to be able to to do right by by you guys and by my community and by my mm -hmm. family at this point and i just want you know like i'm i literally am, am am about to like donate all this money today and 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 prior to that earlier this week and the week before and i've just been sitting here crippled trying to figure out the best way to handle this because i felt like if i donated the money the minute you guys emailed me it'd be a situation of well he's trying to hide it and he's admitting gu guilt by doing that and I never felt that way, but I understand completely that you guys could easily argue that and it would just make me look more like a scumbag. And, um, you know, I, I just want to, you know, I, I want to do right by you guys and what you think. Even if I survive this somehow, even if this is like, people are like, well, whatever, that's how it is. Yeah. This, it's going to take the passion out of what I do. I like, no, I'm, I'm, people aren't going to trust me ever again. I'm not going to trust myself ever again. And I'm just going to walk away from all this. Like, I, I just, this is like me being like, great, so I'm out. Not just a, of, of content creation or or being an online personality. I'm just mm -hmm. going to, I'm just going to stop. I'm just going to disappear and start over and, and never talk to anyone ever again. The simple reality is that if we had not made the videos we did, that money would still be sitting in their bank account doing nothing to fight dementia. And this leads me to what is the worst part of Gerard's video. Let's start with the Open Hand Foundation's formation. When my mother passed away in 2013, we donated her brain and spinal cord to the same academics and doctors we worked with to further advance their research. There's a link in the description to her autopsy report that confirms her brain and spinal cord were both donated to science. I hate to say this, but it needs to be said. The way Gerard uses his dead mother is sickening. When investigating Gerard, I had to watch clip after clip after clip, year after year after year, of him constantly bringing up his dead mother every single chance he gets. He uses her to try and gain sympathy, he uses her to try to get money, and he uses her as a shield against criticism. It is utterly disgusting. I recently lost my mother too, and I know the pain of losing a parent. In fact, I've lost both of my parents. I'm not someone who is unaware of how that feels. But seeing Gerard use his mother's death as a weapon and a shield is messed up on so many levels that it makes me feel nauseous. He brings her up again multiple times in this video, and every single time was not only unnecessary, it was completely inappropriate and manipulative. With all of this being said, there was one thing I did get wrong. I said the tax filings weren't signed. In saying that, however, these filings don't seem to be done properly, and they aren't even signed, which is definitely a legal requirement. The Foundation files all their taxes electronically, which does not require a physical signature on the actual forms. Only e-file authorization forms that are sent from a certified public accountant for electronic signature. Not only is this legal, but it is the industry standard for filing taxes here in the United States. It pains me to say this, but I was incorrect. The forms were signed. This was a throwaway line that was poorly researched and I shouldn't have said it. It meant nothing, it affected nothing, and I based none of my claims on this fact. Still, I owe everyone, and especially Gerard, an apology. So Gerard, from the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry that when discussing your multiple examples of committing charity fraud, I said the open hand tax filings weren't signed. Most of Gerard's video is him going over information unrelated to me, my videos, or my claims. He hardly addresses my concerns about the golf charity event money, essentially saying, we didn't take the money, trust me bro. He provides no bank statements, no accounting, nothing. Apparently, we just have to take this proven liar at his word, which unfortunately, I'm not willing to do. And what he does say doesn't even make sense. Listen to this. Finally, pledges and donations are not always collected at the same time of the event. 
It might take a few months to receive the funds, often rolling them into the following year's income. As for what the costs are to run an event like this, there are event organizers, venue expenses, crafts and catering, event dinners, support staff, production equipment, rentals, event brand and merchandise, security, insurance, and more. Smaller events have smaller costs, and as the foundation scale the events, the expenses increase proportionally. He says donations from the golf tournaments carry across into the next year, but that doesn't happen. The money doesn't appear in any of the later years. For example, in 2022, IndyLand raised over $100,000 according to the lead director of IndyLand, Michael Barrity. I think this figure is especially trustworthy given that it's not coming from Gerard or anyone in his family. Jamie Lee Curtis also gave overhand $25,000. Just those two sources alone is already way over the amount of revenue that open hand declared for that year, which was just 117,000. The golf money is gone. And what's even crazier is that despite open hand not getting any of that golf money, they still took money from other donations to pay for the golf event. Gerard ignores this completely and just tries to confuse everyone. He provides an order from 2014, a year that no one cares about. He breaks down income and expenses from 2023, another year that no one cares about because we don't even have the tax tax filings yet. Almost everything in the video is completely void of purpose and is a huge waste of time. I'm not sure if Gerard is either too stupid to understand what we said or if he is intentionally being stupid in order to make this as confusing as possible. At the end of the video, Gerard gets angry, puffs out his chest and attempts to scare me. Furthermore, my family and I are in serious conversations with our legal teams regarding next steps as the allegations that have been made have been made with complete disregard for the truth of the matter. These allegations were made by individuals who self-admittedly aren't even financial or legal professionals. These allegations are slanderous and we believe we're done with selfish intent. What a pathetic bitch. The guy who lied to his fans for years, taking hundreds of thousands of dollars of their money by misleading them. The guy who kept donations for a decade and only donated because he got caught. The guy who spent donations on himself. The guy who abused the trust of his friends and dragged them into this. The guy who jeopardized the financial security of all of his employees because of his sheer stupidity and greed has the gall to threaten legal action. What an absolute buffoon. If Gerard or his family are stupid enough to go after me, I wish them the best of luck. The actions of Gerard are not the actions of a nice guy. He lies chronically, he has no respect for the property of his fans, he is manipulative, he disrespects his own mother who cannot speak for herself by constantly dragging her into this, he takes no responsibility for what he did, he blames everyone else for being too stupid and easily misled, and he attacks those that rightfully call him out for his shortcomings. And it seems like some of Gerard's friends don't mind if he commits a bit of charity fraud here or there either. They don't mind if he steals and lies and threatens life-changing legal action when he's the one at fault. They don't mind if Gerard takes objectively immoral action against others as long as he's pleasant and friendly to them. Because at the end of the day, as long as Gerard's nice to them, that's all they care about. That's where their moral compass leads them, directly back to themselves. And that's why if I damage Gerard, I damage them, and they hate me for it. At the end of the day, this isn't just about Gerard. This is about raising awareness that these types of people exist. There are people out there who don't care if people lie. They don't care if the audience is manipulated and abused as long as they are within the small group who ultimately benefits. You need to be very weary of those who come with a smile because they are not always genuine. And if you are not careful, you will eventually fall victim. Thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you're having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.